person that I need to redecorate constantly. We just moved into our place six months ago and I already had to redo our bedroom. Um, I wanted to make this video to show everyone how easy it is to achieve the look behind me. Um, I looked for accent frames everywhere, couldn't find anything that was cheap, so I decided to make it myself. So in this video I show you how to make the frames and how to do the wall behind me as well. I was thinking about wallpapering, but it's so expensive, painting so much cheaper, and it's really fun because you're able to do exactly what you want. I couldn't be happier how it came out. So I hope you like this video and I hope it inspires you to redecorate and to brighten up your space. There's nothing better than a good before and after. So before I was able to start taping, I had to do quite a few calculations just to make sure that the spaces were all perfectly even. I'm using frog tape. Uh, it's more expensive than regular painting tape, but it seriously is the only way to keep your lines nice and clean and crisp. So the vertical lines are taped every 16 inches along the wall, and now I'm taping the diagonal lines. To make sure that these lines were all perfectly even, I put pencil marks along the vertical lines every 18 inches, and then as you can see as I'm doing here, I just keep on alternating between going from top to bottom, from bottom to top. And the amazing thing with the frog tape is when you put down a piece of tape, you can lift it up, reposition it, and put it back down, which is perfect because sometimes I would back up and realize that I was slightly off on my measurements. So once you're finished taping, you can do the painting now. So I'm painting the lighter color on top of the darker existing color. And yes, I know my extension pole is way too big for the space, but you gotta work with what you got. Now comes the most satisfying part, peeling off all of the tape. Oh my god, I was loving this a little too much. The frog tape was amazing and didn't bleed through in any of the areas. Oh, I love that stuff. Now there are so many different places that you can get free skids from, I got this one off of Craigslist. So apparently my dog is just as crazy as I am for DIYs. What a little weirdo. So we cut the wood 16 inches long and we thought this looked the best for the size of the pictures that I was going to be using. Since I'm not using nails to hold down the wood, I wanted to use the best glue I could find. So this is PL Construction Glue, and it really adheres to anything, and it makes sure that this is never going to fall apart. For the backing, I had these spare pieces of laminate, so I used these because I wanted something that would be smooth against my wall that I just freshly glued. Good thing with this glue is you can kind of maneuver it once it's already been pressed together. This is really good because you want to make sure that everything is straight and it looks exactly how you want it. So this is the picture hanging kit we're using. Make sure that you get the one that does support the right amount of weight because you really don't want this to fall down. So on either side of the frame, we're measuring 7 inches down. Now we're doing this because we're going to hang the wire from these points. Now from the top of the frame, you want to make sure that you leave about 2 inches so it can hang and you won't see the top of the hanger. Now I looked all over for affordable matting for my pictures, but it's just ridiculously expensive. And for a DIY, I just really didn't want to spend that kind of money. So what I found worked really good is you use poster boards. So just get a plain piece of white poster board and then cut it to the right size. And then it's really easy to customize your matting size. 
This glue is incredible. It's so easy to just run it on the back of your pictures and it's actually photo safe so you know that it won't warp your pictures or leave a residue underneath. So I originally bought these document frames to use for my pictures, but they just weren't big enough and so I decided to go with something different. Since I wanted it to look very rustic, I just used little finishing nails in the corner and just hammered them into the four corners. Uh, as you can see, I'm not very good at doing this, so thank goodness for my husband who is much better at this.